Hello, and welcome to the U U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's informational presentation on our proposed plan for cleaning up the East Waterway Operable Unit of the Harbor Island Superfund site. My name is Ravi Sangha, and I am the EPA Region 10 Remedial Project Manager for Harbor Island and the East Waterway Operable Unit. Today, I'm going to give you more information on the East Waterway proposed plan and cleanup. Please feel free to use your mobile device at any time during this presentation to scan the QR code in the upper right-hand corner of your screen to take you to EPA's website for the, for the Harbor Island Superfund site for the most up-to-date information on the East Waterway proposed plan and for the full text of the documents discussed during this session. We have four main learning objectives for you during this informational presentation. By the end of this session, we hope that you will, one, know where the East Waterway Operable Unit is located and why it needs to be cleaned up. Two, learn how EPA is proposing to clean up the East Waterway. Three, understand how to provide public comments and why public comments are important. And four, have your questions answered about EPA's proposed plan for cleaning up the East Waterway. With those four main learning objectives in mind, let us review the key topics on the agenda. We will start out with a brief overview of the site and provide some history of the East Waterway. Two, this discussion will include talking about the risk to human health and the environment from the East Waterway. Then we will review the Superfund process for the East Waterway Next, we'll present the details of EPA's proposed plan for cleaning up the East Waterway. After that, we will discuss why public comments are important to EPA on this proposed plan for the East Waterway cleanup and how you may provide public comments. Then we will conclude this session by reviewing the top eight questions that we have heard asked about the East Waterway proposed plan so far. We want to emphasize up front in this presentation that EPA's long-term vision for the East Waterway is to obtain the lowest contaminant levels possible in sediments to reduce contaminant concentrations in fish tissue so the Washington State Department of Health can minimize reliance on fish consumption advisories. This long-term vision also includes achieving sediment polychlorinated by phenol concentrations equivalent to the concentrations measured in the non-urban background for Puget Sound, or two parts per billion, PCBs. Achieving this will rely on both an effective cleanup for the East Waterway and robust source control efforts throughout the Green Duwamish River watershed using a range of federal, state, and local regulatory authorities. Let's begin with a brief overview of the site and some history. First, when we say Superfund, we mean a U.S. government law that was first passed in 1980 to clean up some of the nation's most contaminated sites and requires those responsible for the contamination to pay for site studies and cleanup. On your screen is a map of the Harbor Island Superfund site located in the Duwamish River and Elliott Bay in Seattle, Washington. The Harbor Island Superfund site includes the East Waterway Operable Unit that is shaded in pink and circled in red. As you can see from this map, the Harbor Island Superfund site has been divided up into smaller areas called Operable Units, or OUs, to help organize the cleanup work. There are seven active OUs at the Harbor Island Superfund site. Cleanup decisions were made by EPA at five OUs and by the Washington Department of Ecology at the Tank Farm OU. East Waterway is the last remaining OU without a cleanup decision by EPA, and that is why we issued a proposed plan for cleaning up this area. EPA is overseeing cleanup of the East Waterway. 
Additionally, there are two areas within the East Waterway Operable Unit where cleanups are being done as early action. An early action is a specific area where cleanup occurs before site-wide cleanup actions are complete. Slip 36 and Terminal 25 are the early action areas within East Waterway. EPA is overseeing the U.S. Coast Guard at Slip 36 and the Port of Seattle at Terminal 25. In the future, EPA will be requesting public comment on the cleanup options for these early action areas, but that is not the focus of this information session. Lastly, please note that the Lower Duwamish Waterway Superfund site is located just upstream of the Harbor Island Superfund site and already has a final cleanup plan in place. Even though these are two separate Superfund cleanups, EPA recognizes that they are connected by one river and as a result, ongoing coordination on upstream and downstream activities by EPA and our partners is important. The picture on the left of your screen is a historical photo of the East Waterway. Over the past hundred years, the East Waterway has been modified to support urban and industrial development. Some of the changes to the East Waterway include controlling the water flow, constructing Harbor Island in the early 1900s, deepening the channel, shoreline modifications, intertidal habitat loss, and installation of riprap pier aprons and sheet pile walls. Historical activities along the East Waterway have included marine terminals, shipyards, bulk fuel terminals, recycling and scrap metal yards, cement manufacturing, log handling, small boat marinas, boat manufacturing and repair, and many others. Previous commercial and industrial operations contaminated soil, groundwater, and sediment in the adjacent waterways. Today, as you can see from the more recent photo on the right of your screen, the East Waterway remains an active industrial waterway, which is used primarily for container loading and transport. The East Waterway is also an important fishing area for federally recognized tribes because it is part of the usual and accustomed custom fishing areas for the Muckleshoot Indian Tribe, the Suquamish Tribe, and the Yakima Nation. Treaty protected uses within the East Waterway include a commercial salmon fishery as well as ceremonial and subsistence harvesting. Additionally, the East Waterway is also used for other subsistence fishers and for recreation. Even though much of the higher contamination concentrations in the East Waterway came from past industrial activities, it is also important to know that there are many other con contributing sources of contamination. The graphic does a good job of showing these other sources of contamination, particularly PCBs that can enter the waterway. For example, atmospheric deposition, meaning precipitation, road runoff, storm drains, and combined sewer overflows have also polluted surface water and river bottom sediments in the East Waterway over the past hundred years. These other sources mean that cleaning up contaminants like PCBs in urban waterways is difficult and complicated. EPA can take actions to reduce contaminants in the sediment right now, like with this proposed plan for cleaning up the East Waterway, but there is also a need for looking at what needs to be done to clean up the broader watershed to help deal with those ongoing sources. As a result, the key takeaway on this slide is that while today we are presenting an aggressive plan for cleaning up just the contaminated sediment in the East Waterway, it is important to note that lots of other robust source control work will need to be done throughout the Green Duwamish River. Watershed using a range of federal, state, and local regulatory authorities. This slide outlines some of the main contaminants of concern present in the East Waterway that pose the greatest risk to people's health and the environment. The focus Contaminants of concern are polychlorinated biphenyls, arsenic, 
polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, CPAHs, and dioxins and furans. However, there are several other contaminants of concern that are also present at concentrations that could be harmful to animals that live in the sediment of the East Waterway. Each of these main contaminants of concern can adversely affect human health and, and the health of aquatic organisms. Several contaminants of concern can accumulate in fish, meaning people, and species that consume fish from the East Waterway that can be exposed in that way. Environmental data collected in the East Waterway, such as from sediment sampling and animal tissue, were compiled into a document called the Remedial Investigation. This remedial investigation is part of the Superfund process and included human health and ecological risk assessments. These risk assessments looked at different ways that people and animal interact with the environment and then estimated risks from potential current and future exposures to sediment water and consuming fish and shellfish from the East Waterway. EPA determined that there are unacceptable cancer risks and non-cancer hazards to human health in the East Waterway for people who consume fish and shellfish that live their whole lives in the river, also called resident fish, and the people who engage in activities that cause them to be exposed to sediment such as net fishing or harvesting clams. Risks to animals include fish who are exposed to contamination in the sediment and water and when they eat contaminated prey. Also, animals that live in the sediment and other bottom-dwelling organisms are exposed to contaminants present in both water and the sediment. Cleaning up Superfund sites is a multi-phase process. Please note that community involvement is a key piece throughout the Superfund process, both because there are community involvement requirements in the Superfund law and because EPA knows that meaningful public involvement will lead to a better cleanup. The main parts of the Superfund process that I want to highlight on this slide are the following. The Harbor Island Superfund site was listed in 1983 and included the East Waterway sediments, which was designated part of the Superfund site in 1994. As, measured, as mentioned on the previous slide, in 2014, under oversight by EPA, some of the responsible parties called the East Waterway Group that include the Port of Seattle, the City of Seattle, and King County completed the remedial investigation for the East Waterway that determined the nature and extent of contamination and the adverse risk to people and wildlife. In 2019, under oversight by EPA, the East Waterway Group completed a feasibility study that developed and compared possible cleanup options. That brings us to today, where EPA comes to you with the first proposed plan in the process that outlines those different options for cleanup and then presents EPA's preferred plan to clean up the East Waterway, also called the preferred alternative. This proposed plan phase includes a formal public comment period where EPA will collect and carefully review your comments on the proposed plan. Following the proposed plan, the EPA will write an interim record of decision or interim final cleanup plan. This is called an interim versus a final cleanup plan because EPA is planning to propose cleanup levels in the future after cleanup activities of the most contaminated sediment have concluded and EPA has been able to evaluate what has been achieved with controlling ongoing sources, and if contamination entering the East Waterway Operable Unit has been reduced from management of these sources. Additionally, these, this interim record of decision would include a response to the public comments that we received during the public comment period called a responsiveness summary. The Superfund process for the East Waterway Operable Unit is continued on the next slide. The next phase in the process is called remedial design and the development of detailed designs of the cleanup before the construction begins. 
The estimated time for the remedial design phase is four to five years. Next, construction of the cleanup, also called remedial action, would occur over 10 years. EPA would collect data during this time to understand the effectiveness of the cleanup and efforts to control upstream sources of pollution entering the East Waterway. After the construction of the cleanup is complete, EPA would continue to monitor and collect data that will be assessed during each five-year review. Based on all this information, EPA would work with the community, state, and the tribes and the East Waterway Group to establish cleanup levels. Lastly, EPA would prepare another proposed plan that would include cleanup levels and any additional actions deemed necessary to provide the public with another formal comment period before EPA issues a final record of decision or final cleanup plan. Now let's talk about all the details of what it is in the current and first proposed plan for the East Waterway that we discussed on the last slide. The first important piece to understand about EPA's proposed plan for cleaning up the East Waterway is that all cleanup options considered both open water and limited access under pier low bridges areas of East Waterway. In the cleanup alternatives outlined in the East Waterway proposed plan, different cleanup technologies were selected depending on if the area was open water or if the area had limited access. The picture on the left shows an image of open water where there are no visible access limitations or obstructions. In open water areas like this, often a large amount of a technology called dredging can occur. We'll talk more about dredging in a moment. In contrast, the picture on the right is of a limited access area under the West Seattle and Spokane Street bridges where pilings and the height of the bridges themselves would make it difficult for any large equipment or barges to enter. Now let's talk more about the different cleanup technologies that were considered in the East Waterway proposed plan to address these open water and limited access areas. All cleanup alternatives that are outlined in EPA's proposed plan for cleaning up the East Waterway include different combinations of dredging or removal, capping or containment, enhanced natural recovery or ENR, and monitored natural recovery or MNR. Some of the things EPA thought about as we proposed different cleanup technologies to areas included the type, amount, and depth of contamination, the likelihood that people, wildlife, or fish will come into contact with the contamination, the potential for natural recovery, the likelihood that the area might be disturbed by ships or construction activities, and the need to maintain water depths and habitat so that people and fish can continue to use the waterway. Now let's learn more about each of these remedial or cleanup technologies. Dredging is a cleanup technology where contaminated sediment is removed from the waterway and typically transported by barge or rail to an off-site disposal facility. This image demonstrates how a dredging machine from a barge can use equipment to remove sediment and then place that contaminated material on another barge for transport. All the cleanup activities outlined in EPA's East Waterway proposed plan include mechanical dredging in most of the open water areas, removing contaminated sediment is needed to maintain the current and future use of the East Waterway operable unit as a navigable waterway. Engineered capping is a cleanup technology, also called containment, where contaminated sediments are contained by placing layers of sand, gravel, or rock to isolate or prevent migration of contamination. The image, this image shows how clean material 
in this case sand, could be placed by barge in areas of the East Waterway where there is buried contamination or where appropriate water depths would need to be maintained. The next technology that's an EPA technology toolbox is in situ treatment. This is when a special substance such as a sequestering agent like activated carbon or other material is placed on top of the contaminated sediment. The sequestering agent mixes with the underlying contaminated material and helps reduce the toxicity of the contaminant. As you can see from this image, in situ treatment may be useful in limited access areas of the East Waterway Operable Unit. Enhanced natural recovery refers to the placement of a thin layer of clean sand or other habitat material on top of contaminated sediment. Over time, this cleaner surface material mixes with the underlying contaminated sediment to reduce contaminant concentrations. This image shows the enhanced natural recovery layer on top of the buried contamination. This image also shows that for the East Waterway, incoming sediment from the Green River and a very small amount from the Duwamish River will naturally deposit on top of some of the areas of the waterway over time as well. The last technology in EPA's technology toolbox is monitored natural recovery. Monitored natural recovery relies on the natural processes to reduce ecological and human health risks. During the cleanup, EPA takes samples to see if monitored natural recovery is effective. Now that we have covered all the technologies that, are, that were considered in EPA's East Waterway proposed plan, let's talk about all the cleanup alternatives that are in the proposed plan. Before we show you all the cleanup alternatives that EPA evaluated in the East Waterway proposed plan, please keep in mind that EPA uses nine criteria to evaluate all the possible alternatives. The first two criteria are called threshold criteria, which means that any interim cleanup plan that is selected must protect people's health and the environment and comply with applicable laws. We then use the next five criteria as balancing criteria to weigh relative pros and cons of the different alternatives. As we are in the public comment phase, we are currently evaluating the last two criteria, state and tribal acceptance and community acceptance. This public comment period is important because it allows us an opportunity to seek feedback from you before making any final decisions regarding our interim cleanup plan. As you review the proposed plan and think about the material in this presentation, I'll also consider these now nine criteria. Now let's look at all the cleanup alternatives that are in the East Waterway proposed plan. We know this slide has a lot of information, but this is the same figure that is in the EPA proposed plan. This table captures all 10 options or alternatives that were considered by EPA, including an alternative where EPA doesn't do any cleanup at all. This is also called a no action alternative. And this no action alternative is required for comparison. The key pieces to focus on this slide include three different ways to handle the open water area piece to the cleanup were considered in these alternatives and those are marked by different numbers. Number one, considered removal or dredging, capping and enhanced natural recovery in the navigation and sill reach, the area under the West Seattle and low bridges. Number two, considered removal or dredging, capping and enhanced natural recovery in the sill reach. And number three, considered removal and capping. Also, four different ways to handle the limited access area piece to the cleanup were considered, and those were marked by different letters. 
Letter A considered monitored natural recovery in under peer areas and enhanced natural recovery in the sill reach. Letter B considered in situ treatment in under peer areas and enhanced natural recovery in the sill reach. Letter C plus considered diver assisted hydraulic dredging at under peer areas with high concentrations of PCBs or mercury followed by in situ treatment for other under peer areas and enhanced natural recovery in the sill reach. Letter E considered diver assisted hydraulic dredging followed by in situ treatment in all under peer areas and enhanced natural recovery in the sill reach. Finally, two contaminant concentrations to remove high levels of PCBs, also called remedial action levels or RALs, were considered. Those values included 12 milligrams per kilogram organic carbon and 7.5 milligrams per kilogram organic carbon. After considering all these alternatives with the criteria that we mentioned on the previous slide, EPA selected a preferred alternative that we have outlined in this proposed plan that has the following pieces. Number three, removal and capping for open water areas. Letter B, in situ treatment in under peer areas, enhanced natural recovery in the sill reach for limited access areas where a modification to include enhanced natural recovery under the low clearance bridges, 12 or using 12 milligrams per kilogram for PCB removal. Now let's look at this map of EPA's preferred alternative. The key thing to notice on this figure is that EPA is proposing to actively clean up almost the entire waterway. This is one of the most comprehensive cleanups that EPA has proposed in our region. As you can see from all the colors on this map, we are targeting different actions throughout most of the entire waterway. Specifically, the yellow color on the map is where EPA will be dredging and removing contaminated sediment. The areas that are fuchsia on the edges are places under the piers where we have material that needs to be cleaned up, but there is limited access. That is where we are planning to do some in situ treatment. The areas in green are where we will do capping after we have done some dredging. Also, the area that is blue right under the bridge is another limited access area, and we plan to do enhanced natural recovery to help facilitate quicker reduction in contamination by the natural system. Also, there is an area in light pink on the map that goes across the waterway where we know there is a communications cable. In this area, we know we won't be able to dredge deep enough to remove all the contamination without damaging the cable. So we will be doing focused removals as best as we can. We also know there are some areas that are shown in light yellow where we will be also doing removal and backfilling and still maintaining the same water depth of the area. This slide highlights a few other important pieces of information about EPA's preferred alternative. First, you will see a breakdown of all the technologies that EPA is proposing to use for this interim cleanup by acres. And you can see that EPA is proposing to conduct active cleanup on most of the East Waterway Operable Unit. Secondly, you will see that the estimated cost of EPA's preferred alternative for cleaning up the East Waterway is $290 million. Also, the active construction of the cleanup is estimated to take 10 years because we can't work when salmon are migrating through the waterway and we seek to limit construction impacts while tribes are fishing in the waterway. Lastly, because this will be an interim cleanup plan, EPA will propose cleanup levels after cleanup activities have concluded, and EPA has been able to further evaluate what has been achieved with source control, specifically in reducing contamination entering the East Waterway. This interim approach gets the active cleanup of the waterway started 
and gives us time to evaluate the effectiveness of source control efforts and to fully incorporate them into the development of sediment cleanup levels for the East Waterway while taking action now to substantially reduce risks to human health and the environment. Institutional controls, EPA's term for activity and use limitations, such as fish advisories and zoning restrictions, to reduce people's exposure to contamination will also be implemented as part of the interim cleanup plan and will enhance cleanup protectiveness and protect the integrity of the cleanup over time. Some of the institutional controls that EPA is proposing in our preferred alternative for the East Waterway include land use restrictions for, to protect caps and areas where in situ treatment is applied, waterway use restrictions like the photo on the right that shows a sign in the river telling boaters not to disturb the sediment cap, fish consumption advisories like the photo on the bottom that is by the Spokane Street Bridge, and educational outreach that goes along with those fish consumption advisories. EPA will work with local governments to review data that will inform these advisories in the future. Lastly, we want to mention that EPA's long-term vision for the East Waterway is to obtain the lowest contaminant levels possible in sediments to reduce contaminant concentrations in fish tissue so the Washington State Department of Health could minimize reliance on fish consumption advisories. However, as we discussed on the last slide, Achieving this vision will rely on both an effective cleanup of the East Waterway operable unit and robust source control efforts using other federal, state, and local authorities. Community input and questions on EPA's proposed plan for the East Waterway cleanup, including EPA's preferred alternative, are encouraged. We really do review the public comments that you submit and consider if we should make changes to the final interim cleanup plan. You may submit public comments in multiple ways, including by mail, please use the address on this slide, by email to eastwaterwaycomments at epa.gov, by translated comment forms on EPA's Harbor Island website in English, Spanish, Vietnamese, and Khmer, by voicemail in any language by calling 206-553-6520. Again, that's 206-553-6520. By attending public meetings on May 25th, which will be a virtual public meeting in English, and then on June 3rd, which will be an in-person public meeting with interpretation in Spanish, Khmer, and Vietnamese. And there, at both meetings, you can provide oral and or written comments. Please note that public comments must be submitted to EPA by Friday, August 11th to be considered. This comment period and date already incorporates a 45-day extension request that was granted. More information about all these opportunities for providing public comments, including the public meetings, is available on EPA's Harbor Island website at www.epa.gov slash superfund slash harbor dash island. As we mentioned previously, EPA will include a response to the public comments that we receive during the public comment period called a responsiveness summary when we issue the final interim record of decision. And in just a moment, we're going to dive into some of the frequently asked questions to date on EPA's East Waterway proposed plan. However, before we do, we'd like to highlight another piece of EPA's community engagement strategy for the East Waterway proposed plan. And based on lots of community interviews and great information from the update to EPA's Harbor Island Community Involvement Plan, in addition to public meetings, we are also offering up to four availability sessions on the East Waterway proposed plan where we will be available to answer questions. Only written public comments will be accepted. 
The upcoming availability sessions are listed on this slide and include an availability booth at El Mercadito on Tuesday, June 6th from 3 to 7 at 1253 South Cloverdale Street, attending the South Park Neighborhood Association meeting on Tuesday, June 13th, which starts at 6 p.m. at the Duwamish River Community Hub at 8600 14th Avenue South, attending the Georgetown Community Council meeting on Monday, June 26th, starting at 7 p.m. Location is pending. An, avail an, an avail availability booth at the Duwamish River Festival on Saturday, August 5th from 12 to 5 at the Duwamish River People's Park and Shoreline Habitat at 8700 Dallas Avenue South, Seattle, Washington, 98108. And now, let's review some of the frequently asked questions that we have already received. The first question is, why has it taken EPA so long to, to release the proposed plan for the East Waterway Operable Unit? Well, this is a great question, and the reason is because EPA was listening and hearing a lot of different feedback on the East Waterway cleanup, and we took this feedback very seriously. It took us time to process and consider all that feedback that was previously provided by community members, tribal members, public agencies, businesses, and other interested parties. Our next question is, that we have received is who will actually conduct and pay for the cleanup of the East Waterway? Already some potentially responsible parties for the contamination have stepped up and provided sources to complete the remedial investigation and feasibility study with EPA oversight. For the future interim action of the East Waterway, EPA anticipates working with the Port of Seattle, City of Seattle, King County, and potentially other potential responsible parties to implement this interim cleanup under EPA oversight. Question three asks, the East Waterway proposed plan states that EPA has a long-term vision that includes achieving a PCB concentration of two parts per billion. Is this an official cleanup level that EPA is committing to in this proposed plan? Well, the answer is no. EPA will not be setting an official cleanup level until active cleanup of the waterway has been completed and EPA has evaluated the effects of efforts by federal, state, and local governments to reduce contamination entering the East Waterway from the Green Duwamish River watershed. As we have discussed today, this is one of the most comprehensive cleanups, even though it's interim, that EPA has ever proposed in our region. And although we are not setting an official cleanup level, our efforts will be guided by and in support of our long-term vision of two parts per billion, both in our proposed cleanup plan and how we engage with others to reduce contamination coming into the site after active cleanup of the waterway has been concluded. Question four states, will this cleanup have any effect on the Green River and will sediments from the Green River be used for capping in the Duwamish River? EPA's answer, well, this cleanup will not have any effect on the Green River and materials for capping will definitely not come from the Green River. Lastly, EPA will ensure any capping materials are free of contamination. As shown on a previous slide, there will be some natural deposition of sediments from the Green River into the East Waterway because these river systems are connected. Question five asks, what impact would the future construction of this cleanup have on community members? This is an important question, and it is built into the Superfund process for EPA to consider this question with valuable input from community members after an interim record of decision is issued and as the cleanup is being designed. 
The next question asks, why did EPA consider both 7.5 milligrams per kilogram and 12 milligrams per kilogram as a remedial action level for PCBs, but is proposing 12 milligrams per kilogram in their preferred alternative? First, EPA carefully examined the reduction in risk at both levels, 7.5 and 12, and found that the additional risk reduction to the human health or ecological risks from the extra area to be remediated did not justify the additional cost. Furthermore, the lower Duwamish Waterway Superfund site has a PCB remedial action level of 12 milligrams per kilogram. As a result, EPA is proposing a remedial action level of 12 milligrams per kilogram as our preferred alternative for cleaning up the East Waterway. Question seven asks, since EPA's Harbor Island Community Involvement Plan is not final yet, does that mean that there is not binding guidance or official requirements for outreach for the East Waterway proposed plan? This is a great question. First, EPA must fulfill the community involvement requirements for the release of a proposed plan as outlined in the Superfund law. Additionally, even though the updated EPA Harbor Island CIP is not final yet, because EPA is still considering feedback received on the draft via CIP, and EPA wants to consider public comments on the East Waterway proposed plan, so EPA is committing to a robust outreach approach for the East Waterway proposed plan that will include continuing increased public awareness about the Harbor Island Superfund site, including the East Waterway, by sharing information like EPA's general Harbor Island fact sheet and translated Harbor Island 101 materials, advertise the release of the East Waterway proposed plan and common period in English, Spanish, Vietnamese, and Khmer using different media outlets and mediums, provide the option for informal community information sessions between April 21st and April 27th for community members in advance of the public comment period for the East Waterway proposed plan, share high-level updates about the e public comment period for the East Waterway proposed plan at community events and meetings, offer multiple ways to provide public comments as outlined in the East Waterway proposed plan fact sheet. The fact sheet is, will also be translated in Spanish, Vietnamese, and Khmer. Hold two public meetings to collect public comments on Thursday, May 25th, virtually in English, and Saturday, June 3rd, 2023, in person. And the latter has interpretation in Spanish, Khmer, and Vietnamese and offer up to four availability sessions during the public comment period where anyone may ask questions and provide written comments. The last question is, since there are two early action areas within the East Waterway Operable Unit, how will EPA take this into consideration during cleanup for the East Waterway, including community involvement? EPA will ensure that early action cleanups are consistent with the overall cleanup of the East Waterway Operable Unit. Also, like the East Waterway proposed plan, EPA will commit to robust community engagement for these early actions and will design tailored community engagement approaches based on the rich information from community interviews during the update to the EPA Harbor Island CIP. Thank you so much for your time and energy during this presentation on the proposed plan for the East Waterway Operable Unit of the Harbor Island Superfund site. I really appreciate your interest and please feel free to contact EPA with any questions or comments. My contact information as well as Laura Knutson, who is our Community Involvement Coordinator, is, below, is on this slide. So please do contact us if you have any questions regarding the East Waterway proposed plan. And thank you once again.